Hello, hello, it's me again. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, so today I thought I will um, answer a question about how to make a great sounding voice demo. Uh, I am sent a lot of voice demos uh, every single week and I have heard some amazing material and I mean amazing material and I have heard some average material too. And I have a list of things that I usually look out for and I think that list will be helpful to you if you are looking to put a voice demo for yourself. So first of all, now one thing that uh, happens a lot is as a voice artist, you will default to a specific style. So this could be, you know, your, your kind of um, average middle of the road delivery that you go with pretty much in 90% of the orders. Now on your demo, we need to see the full range of your possibilities. So that also includes that 10% of stuff that you do that you don't always get picked for, but that's what gets noticed, you see. So one thing you need to do is make sure to include as much variety as possible. And the way, the best way to think about it is think of different moods you could be in. You could be really, really sad. You could be really happy. You could be kind of, you know, talking normally. You could be very angry. This is not okay. <laughs> you could also be, uh, you know, very sensual and deep and kind of, you know, friendly. Uh, well, friendly, that wasn't the right word, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, and I think it is brilliant idea to include as much of variety of those kind of moods you can get into as possible. So um, the very first, so the very first thing on your intro should be, in my opinion, dry voice. Now we haven't done this okay, uh, as in well on the website, and I have learned the hard way, and we have a lot of demos to redo. So bear with me, but. Mm, you should start with a dry voice. Now, the reason you should do that is you want to demonstrate to the potential producer, first of all, your recording quality, um, as well as um, just the kind of raw potential of the voice. Uh, that's that's how, how I best can describe it. It's the raw potential of the voice that really matters here. Um, quite often, people think, oh, I'm going to put the, the biggest client at the front, you know, but is it always that important? You see, I question that because um, and th this could be entirely down to the producer, by the way. So I'm, I might be entirely of mark here, but in my opinion, really who you voiced for doesn't say much to me in terms of what your voice can do. So quite a lot of, um, you know, in, in a lot of the, the cases, I hear the big brands. When I get the demo, it's the big brands, you know, and there will be the ad for John Lewis, Marks and Spencer, and there will be Toyota and BMW and whatever other big brand you've recorded for. But is it really what matters? Mm, no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Because in my opinion, you could have the best voice in the world and you have not been given the opportunity yet. And if I was to look at the brands first... I would be discriminating 90% of applicant, applicants, literally. <laughs> That's as simple as that because in, in a way, um, yeah, that's just that's just true. And and there were some voice artists who, when, when first applied to us, had fairly limited amount of, of um, good gigs under their belt, yet their voice was absolutely magnificent and amazing and still is to work with and it's so unique. So, yeah. Mm, big brands, not so much, in my opinion. Again, I will highlight that in my opinion. You may be having your own. But um, in my opinion, what matters is variety and how quickly you can demonstrate that variety. So it, I would also say that it's important that you produce demos specifically. Don't be afraid to produce material specifically for a demo. Uh, again, you know, this comes down to not necessarily wor worrying about uh, putting in, um, you know, just a lot of good things you've done. I appreciate as a voice artist, you may not be a producer and therefore you cannot produce your own, um, your own demo and material, but, but you will need to find a producer who will. It's not always cheap as well. Uh, I've seen demo materials going 
for as much as a thousand pounds up. I think that's an overkill, frankly. Um, but uh, yeah, an average, an industry average that I have had um, occasion to look at is probably around three hundred pounds for around ninety second demo. Uh, which again, it's it's still, uh, in my opinion, it's still quite high for what it actually is. But actually, well, 90, 90 seconds, if it's really well produced and there is a lot of a lot of elements in that 90 seconds, then that's justified. Um, but 90 seconds and if it's like four or five different pieces, not justified at all. Um, so, yeah. So so do your research there for sure. Uh, so what do you need to do? Demonstrate as much variety as you can. And I will highlight it over and over and over and over and over again. And then make sure to start with a dry voice. Do you know my favorite demos are actually those that tag at the start a custom message. And it could be something as simple as, um, hey, Isabella, or the name of the person you are applying to, uh, thank you for tuning into my demo. I just wanted to do a quick record and say, hello, this is how my voice sounds in my natural recording studio um, without any processing. I hope you enjoy my demo. Do you know how lovely it is to get that and how rare it is to get it, uh, which uh, which is really surprising. I, I don't know why people don't do it more often, but to me, from from the uh, decision maker point of view, it shows a lot about that voice and uh, about the the work ethics and just general kind of positivity and eagerness to do work. So huge, huge, huge plus if you do that. Um, so custom message at the start, the demo shouldn't be longer than 90 seconds. Uh, I mean, in reality, I will not listen to anything longer than 90 seconds. I will skim through it. Um, there were probably out of all the applications I've ever heard, there may have been two or three that I've listened from start to finish full in full. And the reason I've listened to them is they were very captivating and they were custom written. So the, the scripts in there, uh, had nothing to do with actual clients and all to do with the variety and complexity of of the skills the voice had. So uh, fabulously written. I really wish I had those demos here to play to you. Um, there was one um, done, produced, recorded and produced by now our producer and also voice artist Eric uh, he's produced a fantastic demo for his own voice. Uh, if I find it, I will tag it at the end of this uh, video and podcast for, for you to listen to. But I, I thought he's done an amazing vo- amazing job, both production-wise, as well as sort of scripting and, and just making it very creative in a very clever way. And it captivated me. It, it kept my attention going. And that's a hard thing to do. So so he's done a good good job there. So I will try and look for it. Uh, I really hope I will find it. I can't I can't promise I will, but I will really, really will do my best to do so. Uh, and hopefully we'll we'll share that with you. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we've covered uh, I think three things. So one uh, is not worrying about the brands and more about a variety. Two, putting really a lot of attention on variety. And three, uh, captivating the um, listener by adding a custom message. Um, number four, 90 seconds. So there you go. No, four, four different things. 90 seconds is definitely enough. I would say it's definitely enough. Uh, and uh, another thing, um, be clear on what your niche is. Okay, so... A lot of the time uh, I get um, voice artists who specialize exclusively in audiobooks. And that's a very different niche to what we do. I mean, we do, obviously, we do audiobooks, but majority of the work we do will be radio imaging, podcast intros, outros, commercials, very different cattle of fish altogether, you know. And uh, it's kind of good to know where you are applying, what kind of work they do and what kind of demo they may be interested in. So when you send that demo, make sure it's a demo that that targets the kind of audience that they target. And uh, it, it may be worth to have two different demos, one being the, the imaging kind of voice and another more commercial reads, um, mix. It is definitely beneficial. I mean, when we make demos for our voice artists, that's what we do. We will do two different demos, one being more commercial kind of reads, um, podcast intros fall into that category, as well as um, 
voiceover recordings for telephone lines and, and things like that. And there will be another one for DJ drops and radio imaging because the two very different skills are needed. And we have found uh, over the time that mm, voices are not always suitable for all. So, yeah, so it's worth to, to think about that. But you let me know in your comments what in your opinion works when it comes to uh, a great sounding demo, uh, what captivates you, what what grabs your attention and what do you think are the points that, that make a voiceover demo win. I look forward to hearing from you.